Hello everyone, it's Bikini, and I know it has been a minute since I've done a video, um, I think I shared some of, um, that with you guys, um, the transition, life transition that I've gone through, which was moving from Texas to California, which is something I, um, really, really wanted for myself, since I manifested that and made that work, and it happened. Let me get some stuff together. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to talk about childhood wounds and specifically some of the things that I know I have heard from other people in my community. Um, I've just I've heard the same stuff so many times that I'm like, okay, it just has to be addressed. So. I know one of the big things now is a lot of people are talking about spankings and they have about how, you know, you know, oh my gosh, you know, people are talking about they don't want to spank their kids anymore, what's wrong with people? And um I just think as people who have been um that went through chattel slavery, <laughs> um that is an interesting form of punishment to use, I mean, for anybody. And, you know, people can say that it doesn't matter. But I just know when someone hits me, my reaction isn't to be like, oh, okay, they're doing this because they love me. Like, I'm, I'm thinking that they want to harm me. And I came across a meme, actually, this earlier this week that talked about, um, talked about, uh, um, how some parents will get pull their child to the side and be like, hey, look, I'm doing this because I love you, you know, before they actually spanked them or whipped them or whatever. And they would, you know, the commentary on the meme or the post was like, that's exactly what abusers do. And then a lot of people grow up and they end up in these abusive situations. And I think that's something that needs to be looked at because there's all these different things about black women and how um you know we're dying in hospitals and other things are going on with us um you know there's some there's a lot of domestic partner violence um and i'm primarily um par against black women and it's just like were well, you not groomed to be beat i mean most people i know got beat you know you got beat um as a child and i think that was something really big with the pluto and scorpio generation which was the generation that i I don't know what's going on with my hair, y'all. I mean, I'm just sitting there some idiot. Um, whatever. I need to do a trim. But anyways, um, the generation that I was born into. Actually, let me get the dates for the Pluto and Scorpio generation. But a lot of us were, were spanked. And um, that is, I'm sure our parents were there too. Um, but there was a lot of emotional abuse too that happened in the Pluto and Scorpio generation. Let's see dates. Pluto was in Scorpio from 19, November 1983 until November 1985. So people who were born between those times, yeah, a lot of us were emotionally and physically abused. Now, the emotional abuse is something I want to talk about because I have literally been, I think, really think that was what my Saturn return was about. Um, I have literally been unpacking the level of pain that I was rendered or that I've gone through I mean as a result of emotional abuse I didn't realize until I turned 27 I just turned 30 um it was right before I turned 27 when I realized like wow I was really emotionally I was not treated properly and I remember like young as a, as a child I rationalized with it, or as a young adult and as a teenager, as a child, I rationalized with it because, which I'm sure a lot of you will probably understand, is that, you know, pe people, when you're raised Christian, you're really taught, like, this is in the Bible, you know, corporal punishment, and as well as honor thy father and thy mother. So when they do things to you, you know, you're a child, so you don't even really cognitive, you don't really, you're developing, your brain is developing. So when someone that you are that feeds you 
Now, again, this sounds a lot like slavery to me. Somebody that feeds you and clothes you and, and provides shelter for you tells you, you know, I have to do this because you don't know how to follow directions or you don't know how to behave or whatever. Somebody tells you that um, they're, they're spanking you, they're whipping you, um, you know, you kind of get, I mean, I really, as a child, you don't even, you don't have anywhere to go. You know what I mean? It's not like you can just be like, okay, well, I'm just going to pack up and go move to my own place and go live on my own because this person, you know, whoops me, you know, when they're angry or when they're mad or whatever, or when I've done something that they didn't like, um, or when I was disobedient or whatever it what may have been. You can't do that. So you're confined there. You don't have anywhere to go. Much like, you know, we probably think about domestic violence situations. You know, this is part of why, honestly, a lot of prob women probably say is because they, because we do date our parents. In case you guys didn't know that. We date our parents. You're, they're living that childhood experience. They don't know how they're going to get out. They don't know where to go. They feel helpless. And a lot of times they don't feel like, oh my God, I got to get out of this situation because there's a there's a memory they've already gone through that like before sorry there's background noise or whatever there's people um in my home so um yeah so i was gonna let me go over some stuff because this is one of the same things the slave master used to tell the slaves like you know i feed you i clothe you like i'm talking about um that's another thing that you we can also say um what we can look at with um, some of our parents is of our parents put us to work very early um, I know a lot of people who were put to work early at early ages and their parents were like, and you got to pay a bill and you're like 16, you know, so there was never economic development. Another thing I want to say is a lot of times these, your parents were abusive towards you because that was the only way that they were able to exert any kind of power. Like, just think about it. Like most black parents, you pray, they work for somebody and they have a boss. So... And, and a lot of times they would complain about those bosses, right? Oh, he made me do this, and I gotta do this, and they won't let me have off work. They were always angry. And then this was a job usually that they were doing for survival. They didn't even want to be working the job. They did it because they were trying to take care of you. So they kind of used to they bully you. I work. I take care of you. Blah, blah, blah. As if you asked to be here. So again, that's another thing, too. We got a lot of um, emotional abuse like okay you're here you know i now have to deal with you you know like a lot of people have i even heard have been told like i didn't ask you to be here or you know are you are a mistake stuff like that from your own parents and you know maybe that was the case but it's like they're they hold that resentment so again a lot of times when they're screaming at you and they're whooping you hauling off just slapping you in the face I, and i've heard this from people my, my situation wasn't that bad but i still there still was a lot of emotional abuse and gaslighting and Stuff like that that I grew up with. Um, but, and, and I think in my mind too, also, I rationalized within myself. Well, I didn't get punched in the face. I wasn't getting slapped. I didn't get kicked out um, in comparison to other people's stories. But still, being talked to crazy, being told um, to, not, that you can't speak up, or when you did speak up, being demonized for it, being told to be quiet um, when you have like a full right to speak up and to speak your your mind or whatever um that translates into adulthood and i know for me i had to I realize that in adulthood like wow i really don't speak up for myself when i need to or i let certain things slide or i let certain things go because the people that i was literally left with to depend on to emotion to be emotionally and physically dependent on as a child made me feel bad about it made you know made you feel bad like you know i feed you i clothe you as if they as if as if you are you were in debt to them because they did these things for you which on in a way i understand which is the a whole aspect of respecting your parents but that's where i think there's there's the there's the mind fuck is because it's like you're supposed to respect your parents and then you know and of course and then they throw out the bible scriptures or whatever at you um but the thing is, just because you're supposed to respect your parents or just because they're your parents doesn't mean that they get to abuse you. Like, that's the problem. That's where I get annoyed. Like, okay, I'm supposed to show you respect as my parent, but the minute you start disrespecting me, I have 
a right to remove myself, especially as an adult. Like, you know, I'm not even physically dependent on you anymore. But my, 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 my point is that is so psychologically damaging for the person that you are supposed to physically and emotionally depend on for food, for clothing, for shelter, for emotional support, all kinds of stuff made you feel bad about it, made you feel like, you know, you're, you know, I don't have to be nice to you. You know, how many, how many of us have heard, I ain't your little friend, you know, and I'm not saying your parents, your mom had, your mom had to be your friend, but they literally drew a lot of demarcation. Like, I've even heard people, their mom say stuff like, I don't like you, I love you, but I don't like you. No, I just deal with you. I brought you into this world. And, but then again, there's no emotional bonding. There's no love. There's no support. And one thing that I was talking about earlier, which maybe prompted me to do this video, is that I've heard from a lot of women, like, or that I hear from a lot of women, I know I've heard a lot in my life, is always being told what you can't do. Well, you have a, you're a mom now. You can't do that. Well, you're married now. So you can't do that. Well, you a girl, so you can't do that. But very few times have we been told or given, and those of you who have been given this, you're this, I'm, you know, you're blessed. Um, but um, the whole um, aspect of you know, you're never really emboldened to do so. No one is ever just like, you know what, you should go out there and be a golf star, you know, because. Golf is male, male dominated, right? So you don't get that push to go do that. Or even you have a child or you get married or because your parents are of a certain stature or whatever, whatever, you're just kind of pushed into this box of be ladylike. Don't say this, don't say that. And so again, a lot of times what women start doing is they're like, can I say that? Can I do that? Is that okay? Like they're always like, I need to turn on this hair. I keep messing with it. <laughs> They are, um, they are always asking for permission. And the thing is with that, with women, um, well, period, but I'm saying this to women, is when you're always asking for permission, you're not really living your truth. You aren't really living out loud. You aren't really being, you know, that bitch you want to be. You're not doing that because you're always second guessing. And a lot of that, again, is ingrained in childhood. And so one of the things that I really want to implore is childhood healing healing that inner child and i'm going to send out a free video on how to heal your inner child in my newsletter so please sign up for my newsletter i'm going to put that below um but i'm also going to be teaching about the vagina and healing through the vagina and i'll do another video on that as i get closer to that time probably be around january when i will launch it and i'll probably do a video about it maybe around um december to kind of get you guys understanding what I have going on um and update you on that because I found there's so much different healing when you are in touch with your vagina you can also prevent pregnancy naturally you can also what it's done in through birth control basically you you can create your own form of birth control through your body um and also what about breast health put my hands on my chest <laughs> you guys can't see it though probably breast health and um, some other really cool stuff that I feel like, or I know for a fact, um, will take you to the next level in embracing your femininity and just, you know, feminine healing and all that kind of great stuff. But what I was saying about um, this is I want, I wrote a few notes actually. So again, with women, you're often told can't, 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 can't. The minute you get around a person, I'm, and I posted this on Facebook, the minute you get around a person, they're telling what, telling you what you can't do, get away from them, because there's nothing that women can't do. You know, they're just telling you that you shouldn't, and usually it's because it makes them comfortable that you're not doing that thing. And women have to get out of this whole mindset that has been pushed on them that they have to do what's best for the collective. No. Women need to do what's best for them. That is what's best for the collective. Um, which is something that we're going to be talking about in the vagina class. Um, healing class. And this is for emotional women. This is not just if you have a female health issue. If you do have a female health issue, you absolutely need to be in the class. But um, even if you don't, if you aren't 
deep you're in touch with your womb. You don't know when you're ovulating. You don't know when your period is going to come on um, exactly. Then um, we need to talk. We need to be a Um, Let's see what else. Oh, yeah. Also, emotions are demonized. Um, this is, again, something that's passed down from slavery. You know, this is something that the, the mothers would, you know, make their children strong and buck them up and try to get them to be fearless and get them to be a certain way. But that was a, it was a, it was a, it was a form of, um, it was a form of self-preservation. And we're still holding on to that rigidness. And this is also why I, and I tell women to go get massages because a lot of times we be holding all this tension. And a lot of that shit is ancestral, y'all. It's ancestral. I mean, it's really, really deep. Um, so, yes, emotions are demonized. I've talked about the parental abuse that is very, very common, especially in the black community. But I've seen it in everybody. I've seen every race of people deal with parents that are emotionally abusive. And then when you try to talk to them about it, they're like, I didn't say that. That's the gaslighting, making you feel like you're crazy. Or they um, are like, well, I fed you and I clothed you and you're here. So. You know, they don't want to acknowledge it. And when I was on the post, one of the ladies is a therapist. She commented and she said, oh, my God, I just wish black mothers would stop with this. She she commented specifically on how black mothers, I didn't do that. And the thing is, is they probably were really stressed out, really angry. They took it out on you. Yes, it was wrong. Um, but in their mind, truthfully, a lot of them feel like I did the best I could. And maybe that is true, but that still doesn't mean that you didn't hurt your kid. You know what I mean? On an emotional level. And the things that happen, again, go between ages 1 and 7. And then from 7 to, you know, 17, 18 years old. I mean, you're developing. Like, again, your mind is, is warped. And this is why so many people end up in these shitty-ass relationships over and over and over. Because you're dating your parents. And your parents were not emotionally available or they starved you from love. So you're, you're just repeating these patterns. I mean, y'all need to, that's why I, I tell, tell people about therapy. People think you have to have a nervous breakdown to go to therapy. No. You can literally have communication issues due to being told to shut the fuck up when you're five and six, seven, eight years old. And now you can articulate yourself and now you can't. You're having issues on a, a relationship. You're having issues at work. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah, it's just so much stuff. Even being sheltered and then to add that layer of religion on top of it, I mean, some of us are really, really mind fucked, like, and we don't even realize it. Um, so it's really deep. Um, so yes, for my ladies, I want to ask you, and even some of the men are watching this video, I want to ask you, where are you putting yourself last? But especially my ladies, because we are grown for that. To tell you to put everybody else first. Um, I shared with some of you guys that I took my son with me to college. I had already done two years. I had two years to go. And I didn't have family where I was going. Um, my family was where I was. But they were not being emotionally and physically supportive of me. They weren't babysitting. They weren't really um, being there for me as far as me trying to go to school. Um, and I wanted to finish at Spelman specifically. So I took my son and we packed up and we drove 13 hours to Georgia. And I had already re-enrolled in school and everything. And I was doing my work. I mean, I busted my ass. I was exhausted, to say the least. I mean, absolutely exhausted. Working crazy hours. And at one point, I began bleeding profusely. This is when I began bleeding. I think I talked about this. And I had all my hormones were out of whack. And it was because I was doing all of those things. I was doing too much. I had shifted into a masculine space. So my hormones had realized. Oh, we're working all the time now. We don't get a break now. And realize, okay, that's not normal for our body. For a, fem for a female body, that's not normal. And my body started to wreak havoc. And again, this is something we'll talk deeper about in the uh, vagina healing class. Um, which is really going to be more like a little workshop. Class. It's not really going to be like a short little class. I mean, this is like deep healing. And like I said, information will be coming forth about that. Um, whew, so... Yes, so we'll be talking about the hormones and all that stuff that goes on with your body. Um, and so, but I was so busy trying to, you know, prove myself and do all these different things. Um, like I said, it, it, it drove me in a very, in a state, my body was in a state of panic. So anyways, move for, moving forward, um, 
when I was doing all these things, really on a level of survival. Like I said, at this point, I was a mom. Really, the cycle was repeating. So, no, it's a lot. But we'll go a little deeper into that. Um, so, my thing is that, I, you know, we're often taught to hide ourselves. Like I said, I've been hearing from different women as well that their parents told them, you know, you need to be going to school two states over or going to that school or doing this because you have a baby now or whatever. And I hate that because... As a mom, there are things that you are supposed to do for your kids. And if you feel like getting an education is going to help you, which I did and which I do still on um, certain levels, um, it was something I wanted to do as well, you know, um, which is what's good for the mother is what's good for the child. And um, I just made the decision and I just went. But everybody was telling me not to. Like, y'all, now that I have a degree from Spelman, like, my family applauds me. Oh, you have a degree from an establishment school, school. But again, like I said, when I was mentioned that I wanted to go back, nobody was being supportive. And normally I would have second guessed myself. But I just, for whatever reason, I was just like, well, fuck this, I'm about to go get it myself. Um, but where are you putting yourself last? So in situations like that, did you put yourself last and put on school because your mama and your grandmama and your uncle told you that you shouldn't do it because you have three kids? Are they a little bit older now? Can you make that time to do that for yourself? Um, that's just an example. But ask yourself, where are you putting yourself last? Also, where are you hiding? There are so many things, and especially sexually, oh my God, women are taught to hide themselves. And, you know, we get this apart with the church stuff too. Oh my God, black women. Um, but you're taught to hide yourself. And where are you hiding that you want to kind of let yourself out? Like, I know so many women that dress frumpy because... Their moms used to make them feel bad about the things they would wear that did accentuate their body. You are supposed to accentuate your body as a woman. You know what I mean? But you may have been demonized from doing that because of how you were raised. Um, it's just really deep. And like I said, a lot of this stuff crops up in relationships or our inability to find or get into a healthy relationship. Um, this emotional abuse that we've endured. Um, but we're going to talk about that, releasing that. I will be sending out a video about releasing, healing the inner child, and I will also later be sending more information about um, the vagina healing program and just going deeper um, and healing yourself because, I mean, it's some really deep stuff that, again, women are just not, you're not living your best life. You aren't really living your full self because literally, like, I really, I had to, like, literally, y'all, when I started working on this new part of my healing journey. I had to realize that 90% of the conversation that I have with my own family, and this is why I say I don't see the problem with separating yourself from family members if they are toxic. Because I feel like that just goes for anybody. Like nobody should be in a space where they're surrounded by, like you just shouldn't have to do with toxic, period. That's something that, again, that's a church programming that you're supposed to just put up with it because this is your family member. Like, no, that's. No. It's supposed to go where you're loved and celebrated. Um what was I gonna say? Yes, where are you hiding yourself? Where are you hiding yourself? Look deeper and ask yourself, where are you hiding? Are you not going out? When you could be going out meeting and mingling people. I found I was doing this because my mom used to always make me feel bad about wanting to go to movies go to parties, different stuff like that. And as a child, so I really didn't, again, I really didn't have a, a good social life as a teenager. So that has transpired to now as an adult. My friends usually have to like pull me out of the house to go to events that I actually fully enjoy. Fully enjoy. Because there's a level of guilt there. Like you shouldn't be doing that. You need to be focused on, you know, again, they just, Again, a lot of my parents just suck the fucking fun out of everything and made it made you feel like if you weren't working all the time, something was wrong with you. That's from slavery, y'all. That's some serious intergenerational slavery programming. Um, poverty programming is really what that is. It's, it's programming you for poverty. But we will talk deeper into that because, um, again, when we talk about this, this sacral and vagina healing program, your sacral chakra is where money is, is created, as well as sexual pleasure. And those things are related really, really deep. 
Also, in June, we will be going to Lake Tahoe, you guys. I'm going to put the um, information below on how to sign up for the event, but it will be a soul and sexual revival at Lake Tahoe. Um, it's going to be during at the beginning of the summer solstice 2019. I'm so excited. And um, we are going to be healing. We're going to be healing. Um, there will also be a shaman there. Um, and it, this is going to be some deep healing. We're going to be doing belly dancing. We're going to be doing parasailing. We're going to be doing some twerking. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of fun stuff. Eating great. And we're going to have a spa day. I'm so excited. Um, and there are limited spots there. So please get your deposits in. Um, and the rates will be going up um, around March. So we um, get in while you fit in. The rates are pretty low right now. Um, and so please make sure you follow the Facebook group. And the information will be coming out. I'm sorry, the Facebook notification, the information will be coming out. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm excited about that. So I have to go, you guys. I'm, I've been doing so much. Um, I just slowed down on astrology reading. Um, but I have a lot of other things that I'm doing. As you guys know, I'm teaching astrology classes at King Hiki Gypsy in Oakland, California, where I now live. And um, I am modeling. I am modeling. Maybe I should do a video about that. About modeling, um, about how I shifted, shifted my paradigm. Um, so yes, that's it for that. The emotional healing. We're gonna talk deeper about that. And I just kind of want you guys to think about that. Um, I know this holiday season is probably very triggering for a lot of people, and um, you ain't got to deal with that bullshit. Like you really don't. Only go where you're celebrated. So, all right. See you guys later. Bye.